Hello and welcome to Stocks to Watch, where we explore some of today's most promising investment ideas. I am Munir Baraz, your business analyst and host. And in this episode, I'm talking with Ina Braveman, founder and CEO of EcoWave Power, and David Lepp, director and co-founder of EcoWave Power, a clean energy innovator turning ocean waves into affordable electricity with its patented shore-based technology. With projects in the Middle East, Europe, and soon in the U.S. at the Port of Los Angeles, the company is rapidly expanding a 400-plus megawatt global pipeline. Hello, Ina and David. It's good to have you both on the show today. Hello. Yeah, great to meet you. Great to be here also. You're quite welcome. So let me start with you, David. You are the co-founder of EcoWave Power and personally invested $1 million into the company. What inspired you to pursue the wave energy sector in the first place? It started, I guess, a long time ago, probably 15 years ago, being on the beach and watching the waves going in and out. And then doing some research on the internet about, you know, continuous energy being built from from the waves. And there was some research being, some work being done, which looked kind of cool. And I, I did find some interest in it. And then by impromptu meeting, meeting Ina, and she had the same vision and inspiration and she had the same thoughts. And so from that day we started working together on implementing projects the project and trying to get it information and how to move forward and with her excitement and the ability to put people together and project together i was excited and happy to in, invest the money and 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 turn green energy into green money which which has taken some while to happen, but there was nothing but excitement since the day we met and started talking about this project, even though there had been some companies which which had tried offshore wave energy and that didn't work. I knew that the vision that we chose was going to be successful. Wonderful. So the idea originated or the spark started at the beach and then you you and Ina shared that passion and it all started from there. Ina, I want to ask you, how do you feel there is a U.S. project commencing soon? How do you feel about the upcoming opening of the Port of Los Angeles pilot? And what is the primary goal of this project? Also, what can we expect to see and experience during the opening ceremony? So I'm super excited about the pilot project in the port of Los Angeles. This is EcoWave Power first wave energy project in the United States. And what I believe to be the first onshore wave energy project in the United States. So it's super exciting. We've been through a long process to receive all the regulatory approvals and we collaborated very well with the Alta Sea, which are hosting our projects at the port of Los Angeles and the Army Corps of Engineers to really make that happen. I think this project is so important because it can serve and will serve as kind of our opening to the United States market. We established a number of goals for this project, including demonstration of the technology. Uh, We want to facilitate environmental monitoring. We're actually in discussions with PNNL to uh, do some work related to environmental monitoring, showing that our project has no negative impact on the environment. Uh, It will be also a learning hub for government, investors, scientists, students, and hopefully we'll also lay the groundwork for the first commercial grid-connected projects in the United States. And one of the also very, very important items for us with this project is to show how well we engage with local communities and we create new employment opportunities We create a new industry where local companies can work. So, for example, for the production of our floaters, we engage always metal. It's a woman-owned steel manufacturing business, which is very rare to see women in that specific field. And so we're very proud of that. We also engage with C&S Welding, which is a family-owned many, many years, you know, back kind of company, and they did all the installation of the floaters. So already with the pilot, we're creating so many workplaces and we're creating so much impact. Imagine what we can do with a commercial scale uh, installation. 
and uh, what is expected in the opening ceremony. So we're expected to have speeches from our partner, which is Alta C, uh, hopefully Shell. Shell invested 50% of the cost of the project. Uh, government representatives, we also have uh, our uh, partners flying over from all over the world. We're expected to have uh, our partners from Taiwan. They will be delivering a speech about the upcoming project in Taiwan and also some other surprises. So st stay tuned. I'm sure that uh, the opening will be very, very innovative and exciting. Absolutely. Very exciting. And this is quite a milestone and it's great to hear about the positive feedback loops between you and your partners on the ground in the U.S. You're creating like a very positive ecosystem and environment there, if you will. Um, I want to ask you, David, about your ability, because it's clear that you're able to, to overcome technical hurdles, among others. In December 2024, EcoWave Power celebrated the official opening of its grid-connected wave energy project in Israel. Now, on September 9th, you are preparing to inaugurate your first pilot in the U.S. We rarely hear about other wave energy companies commissioning new projects, yet EcoWave Power is launching two within less than 12 months. So what enables the company to move at this pace and what sets it apart from its peers uh, in the industry? I, 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 it's a good question, but I, I really don't think that it's being done at the pace that we wanted to go. We definitely wanted to go a lot faster as to regards us, us opening up two projects at the same time in the same year it just so happens that that's when the the licensing and that's when everything happened happened we actually started the israel project years ago and we started the the usa project years ago with this knowledge and and learning of how to go through licensing how to go through the technology and how to go through multiple approval processes hopefully that will make us go faster than we would like but right now i don't think it's going uh at the speed everything is going how we want it to but we always want it to go a little bit faster as to regards to other wave energy projects i mean the main thing that i think is happening is is ina's vision of just sticking with onshore wave energy the issue that has happened with wave energy before is that it's all gone offshore and just it's just a mess in trying to install the 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 oceans are can be and are very rough at times and getting to them whether it's by the divers or boats is just a nightmare and with Ina's vision of just sticking to onshore and and, and operating it like a like like a regular power station is and you know operating with with technologies that are already out there and just being able to put them together i think that's what makes a difference and, and makes it happen with proper speed and proper execution so that was the right orientation and, and focus to begin with operationally technically and so forth and i know ina is excited about the launch of your us project but how do you personally feel about that launch well, I, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm just as excited as everybody involved in the project and that anybody that's involved in anything in renewable energy, I think it's, it's, it's one small step for wave energy in the world right now. And I know that starting in the USA, it'll, it'll just grow in the USA and then grow in the rest of the world and become popular and hopefully our vision is to see power stations and in lots of ports breakwaters and and cliffs around the world which are not being used and that will will not kill birds or 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 destroy habitat or or oceans and 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 everybody could be proud of of having it installed or next to them or being part of them wonderful and, and I want to talk about the path forward. Uh, Ina, following this milestone, what can we expect next from EcoWave Power? So I think the journey ahead of for EcoWave Power is super exciting. We have now the grid-connected project working in Israel. We will have the project in LA 
uh, which is serving as proof of concept for the U.S. market. We also have new deals that we signed in Taiwan, in India. In India, our partner is Bharat Petroleum, which is a Fortune 512 billion market cap uh, oil and gas company uh, that wants to establish a pilot in its uh, Mumbai oil terminal. And we have our largest projects project today that we're building in uh, the city of Porto in Portugal. Uh, we already... Uh, commenced all the preparation works and, and we're expected to finish the construction by September 2026. So that's super exciting going from two projects to five projects uh, where, as you said before, Munir, uh, most of the industry is not even building one real conditions project. Most of the companies are still stuck very early on in uh, computer simulation, wave pool testing. Nobody's actually going to the ocean or going to the waves and uh, accumulating real experience. So I think we have a very exciting path. And other than that, uh, we have uh, new deals that we're signing all the time. For example, we just announced a new feasibility study that we're doing for a port in South Africa. Uh, we're discussing with uh, one large, very prominent uh, technology company that uh, would like to explore with us the possibility of providing clean energy from the waste for its data centers and for the AI industry. And in general, with the growth of AI, according to President Trump for the United States, for example, to keep leadership in the AI field, it needs to double the amount of clean, the amount of energy in general. So I believe that clean energy will be definitely a part of the solution. According to the United States Energy Information Administration, wave energy on its own can provide 66% of all the United States energy needs. So I'm sure we will be part of the solution. I'm sure wave energy is a game changer and we want to bring wave energy to every suitable location around the world. Yeah, we all know about the hungry data centers and, and, and the huge demand for energy that is only going to pick up moving forward. Yeah. And the, the company has been performing very well on its projects so far. But you know, Ina, that, that succeeding with pilot projects is not the same as scaling. So from your perspective, what are the key steps that EcoWave Power needs to take in order to achieve full commercialization of its technology? So I would say that there are three main things that uh, we have to achieve. The first one is doing some more pilots, but less for maybe the technology testing aspect, but more for penetration to many uh, innovative locations around the world. In the end of the day, wave energy is kind of a new kid in the block of renewable energy. So not a lot of governments have legislations and supportive policies for wave energy. And when we come there with a the pilot, it actually opens the market for us. A second thing that we put a very strong emphasis on is uh, on our R&D work. So our goal is to lower our capex, which is the construction cost of the assets, lower our levelized cost of energy to be comparable to the prices of solar and wind. And we believe that we can achieve that since, again, our technology is simple. It attaches to existing man-made structures such as piers, breakwaters, jetties. So already it's not an expensive technology that has to be installed in the middle of the ocean with ships and divers and underwater mooring and cables. But right now we're seeing in our project that uh, the main cost component kind of of our projects are the floaters because they're made from steel and you need to paint them with special marine painting to prevent corrosion and so on. So it's a lot of handling. So we now started uh, exploring uh, different materials to kind of lower the, to lower the prices of the floaters. We believe this will significantly lower uh, the price of our overall projects and will make us comparable to the price of solar, which would be amazing because, you know, solar is an amazing source, but wave energy can produce 24-7, even at night in suitable locations. So once the price is there and the production is higher, nobody will be able to so say no to wave energy. And this is kind of our goal. And, um, and kind of the third thing that I think we have to achieve and will be achieved in the next one year is the opening of the Portuguese project. The pilots that we build are not always built in ideal kind of uh, wave conditions. Uh, they're, they, they're built in ideal wave conditions for testing, but not for you know, revenue production or for, for commercial energy production. And what's unique in the Portuguese project is, first of all, that it's the largest that we built to date. It's one megawatt in size. It's 40 large scale floaters. And uh, the second thing is that Portugal in this specific site has over 90% waves availability. So basically we can be producing energy nearly around the clock, which is very, very different from wind, solar and other renewable energy sources. So I think executing successfully on the Portuguese project, showing 24 seven production on this project, 
lowering our capex and our and as a result our levelized cost of energy and put in more pilots in new locations that we want to work with to create regulation because in the end of the day the regulation saves time and like david says we're going faster than other wave energy companies but we want to go even faster and i think regulation will definitely enable it i really like the the focus on that objective getting as near as possible and 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 probably match the cost of solar energy because those who know are aware that the cost of solar power has been dropping significantly and it's very, very efficient at this point. And when you also add the fact that when you rely on waves which are not intermittent necessarily the same way that that solar power is, that is also an added plus. So that's a very remarkable focus on on efficiency and, and the ability to provide stable supply of power. David, I want to hear from you. Uh, and this is my last question. Looking ahead, if you were to envision the future of ecowave power, what did the, what would that future look like? Well, definitely I would see I would see more power stations installed in different places. I would definitely see more acceptance of it. I would I would see a little bit more of acceptance and and, and approval from governments and from governing bodies to make it easier to install and install power stations. I would also definitely see the ability of installing more power stations in places that are not being used now. Unlike wind, which really is a sore to the eye and can be you know, dangerous to, to birds, and in some cases, the ocean, this is absolutely not sore to the eye. It's, it definitely does not endanger any animals, any, any oceans, any ocean species, any bird species. And it's something that definitely should be taken a lot more seriously in the energy department and definitely in the financial department. And, and people understanding that we're here to create more jobs and opportunity in the local places that we are installing the power stations. So we are trying to, almost like uh, restaurants try and do from farm to table, we are trying to do energy, renewable energy, from, from all local, from farm to table. So creating jobs for the local people, creating money for the local people, making sure that the electricity is for people that are, that, that are, are local. And as well, we can never take this away, is Ina's vision as an entrepreneur and as a wave energy pioneer is is really something that we're all looking for towards. I know there's been a big division of of you know should we have women doing the job or men doing the job? And I'm in a I'm really a believer that no matter what your pronoun is, no matter what you know what your title is, if you can do the job better than anybody else can, that's what you should be doing. And I really believe that you know is not just the best women for the job or not just the, the 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 best pronoun for the job but she is definitely the best person that has been put there to make sure that wave energy gets its spot in the world and and, and gets its recognition well i can definitely sense the enthusiasm coming from both you and ina absolutely and 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 clearly you are the best people to to be at the helm of this company really great to hear from both of you and ecowave power a company that has infinite horizon relying on a source of renewable energy which is waves which is also presumably infinite so really great to hear from both of you today and we look forward to hear from you again very soon on this show thank you thank, thank you. you very thank you very much and i'm looking forward to the future and to betterment of the future just as, as much as everybody else is here at EcoWave Power and, and, and watching this as well. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you.